How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the USA Martial Arts Hall of Fame. I am your host today, Scott Lotham, hanging out with the one and only Grandmaster Mark Shuey. How's it going today? Going great. Fantastic. Are you excited to be here today? I am totally excited. Jim puts on, Jim and Lori put on a great show. It is. It is it fantastic. Is. I've been here for almost two years now, and it's been amazing every year. Uh, Master Shuey here has been doing this for martial arts over 60 years now. I'm only and 39 years old, so let's not get carried away. That's right. Now, uh, you're from uh, Reno, Nevada, correct? Actually, Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe. Lake yes. Tahoe. Okay. Fantastic. So, uh, Kind of, you're going to be doing some seminars today, uh, talking about some cane work, yes, correct? Yes. So go ahead, tell, tell us a little bit more about what you actually do right now with the canes. Well, I've been doing only the cane for the last 22 years. Of course, I have the empty hand martial arts involved with it. I teach kids and stuff. But uh, I discovered what a cane can really do, and I just also discovered that they didn't have any systems on the crook cane. 22 years ago, hmm. which amazed me because the martial arts takes a pride in taking tools and turning them into weapons. Right. And uh, I was in Palm Springs visiting my brother. Mm -hmm. Three ladies over the age of 70 were brutally attacked, raped, mm -hmm. and uh, two of them had canes and aluminum and stuff, didn't know what to do with them. Mm -hmm. And so I started researching because I was doing Hapkido, and my uh, one of my tests in Hapkido going for my third degree black was Sir? cane stuff. Okay. And. Uh, like when I was researching it, it was funny how I found canes in the system, but no system on the cane. But anyway, I researched it. Nobody was making a good, strong fighting cane. Right. And I've been working with wood all my life. I was a general contractor at that time with 91 employees. Okay. So first I wanted to make a good, strong cane. And then when I found out there wasn't a system, boy, it clicked. And uh, I've been doing just the cane, going around, developing it, developing it for the last 22 years. Wow. And so have you, would you say it's really grown a lot since you first kind of initially started it? Oh, yeah. In fact, when I first was doing uh, competing, I used to have people laugh at me when I was going up there and competing with the cane. Of course, I was getting pretty good. And uh, after taking the first place a lot, they don't laugh at me anymore. <laughs> right. But we discovered about the cane, it is a medical device. Mm -hmm. You cannot say anything else, especially if you're going on an airplane or something. We're talking to a security officer. This mm -hmm. is a medical device. It's a cane. It's a crutch. It has nothing to do with self-defense. But you go to the, the self-defense aspect, look at it. It's a Billy Club right. Alameda. Right. That's what I was going to ask you. I was like, you know, because, you know, a lot of people have weapons for self-defense. But, you know, the typical, obviously, knives you can't take on a plane. Obviously, even, you know, non Yeah, yeah there's things that you can't even play, uh, take on the plane. But the cane, like you said, it's a medical device. They so. let you on the plane first. That's true. <laughs> get, get the best seat, right? Yeah. <laughs> So you also sell these canes as well, yeah, like specific I make them, canes? I make them and I sell them. I've been, I'm selling about 300 a month now. Wow. And I've changed it. The thing with the cane was people don't realize, especially seniors, the seniors won't use a cane. They're the hardest person to sell a cane to because they think the cane makes them cold. But if they get a hold of one of my canes and spend an hour with me, it empowers them. They don't want to put it down anymore. Because it, it, it can go over 250 miles an hour in a half a second. <laughs> I know I don't want to get hit by one, that's for sure. So, are, are your canes you make, are they, do you kind of like specifically design them to be a little more weaponized? Or are they just kind of custom ordered or how do you? Let's not use the word weaponized, I make it more aggressive. Okay. Uh, like these here. If you want, I can give you a demonstration. It really, really hurts. Okay. I call them shark teeth to begin with. Now I call them band holders for the exercise system. So I have any reason why all these notches are on here. Okay, but these here are used for raking and scraping. Here, put your hand on my chest. Okay. Like you're grabbing. Like I'm grabbing you. Tell, okay. tell me when you want me to stop. Mm, all right. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> and that's with no pressure. So these things will tear somebody apart. That's fantastic. Okay. Yeah. And like I've started to put on this here, I just designed about three years ago. Okay. When I first designed it, I called a head knocker. Okay. Because of what it could do. It looks like and it. And yeah. my legal team said, no, you can't have a head knocker on a medical device. So we, right. we changed it to a crook extension. This is the crook, so we call it a crook extension. We also have one that's derby style that's about an inch and a half long. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, this comes to a point here. I don't know if you guys can see it on film here, but that comes to a point. So when you get the longer one, you can cut some mm. if you want. It's great but, stuff, guys. This is great stuff. <laughs> but uh, I put the, the grips on here so it won't slip out of your hand. Cause right. Because if you do get in a situation, your hands start to sweat. And I've uh, never had a problem going through the airports. So I've had some people say, well, it's it's just a custom medical device. So you, you teach everything from even the law enforcement communities too, huh? Everybody. I really wow. want to help the seniors. That's my thing. And, and 
the, the program for the veterans. Let me tell you about that. Yes, please it's do. It's a program that uh, Grandmaster Tom Foreman started. It's called the Warrior Cane Project. And what we do is we give a free, customized wooden cane valued at around $200. It's okay. free. And, th and three hours of training. It's all for free. We'll fly anywhere in the United States. We have to have 25 of them. <coughs> Excuse me. But we have to have 25 people minimum. And then we'll fly anywhere in the United States. No charge for anything you guys do. If we stay overnight, we'd like you to you know, put us in a hotel or something, or me in a hotel, whatever going on. Right. But there's no charge for the cane. There's no charge for the seminar. It's all free for the veteran. I need a cane, even though I don't need one. I still want one. <laughs> well, nowadays, it's crazy not to carry a cane. What's going on? Out there? Well, thank you so much, uh, Master Shui, for your time. It's been a pleasure. And we're going to jump in. Uh, make sure you guys check out the seminars we got today. I'll have some videos up on that. And once again, we'll have all the links to all of the websites and where you need to go for more information down below. Thank you guys so much. And we will see you soon, Mr. Master Shui. Thank Shui. you. Thank okay. you so much. Take care. All right.